Hello my fellow book addicts, Megan here, and time for another book review. Today, I'm going to be talking about The Icebound Land by John Flanagan, and this is the third book in the Ranger's Apprentice series. So, because this is the third book in a series, there's not too much I can say without giving spoilers. So, without further ado, I'm just going to go right into a spoilery section. So if you have not read The Icebound Land, I suggest you click away now and come back after you catch up. Alright, so a little refresher. We ended the last book, The Burning Bridge, with Will and Evelyn being basically kidnapped by Scandians, and now they are on their way to Scandia, and they are basically going to be sold as slaves. And Holt, who did not get there in time, he was just the slightest bit too late to be able to save them, but he vows that he will find Will, and he will get him home. And you know, Evelyn too, who is really Princess Cassandra. But for the sake of my own sanity, I'm just going to keep referring to her as Evelyn, which is how they kept referring to her in this book as well. So in this book, we get to see Will and Evelyn's journey to Scandia, and it's not the most pleasant journey. They spend a lot of time at sea, <clears throat> a lot of time in this little pass area, before they get to Scandia. And on the way, Will is so determined to escape. Because he knows, yeah, Cassandra, she's a princess. You know, Evelyn does reveal that she is a princess to Will. Because she see, doesn't see the point of Will doing all these preparations to try and escape. When, you know, she just has to reveal her identity to the right person. And she can be ransomed back to their home kingdom. But Will, being clever realizes, well, that might get her to safety, but I'm not royalty. I'm just a ranger's apprentice, and <laughs> the Scandians aren't too fond of rangers. You know, what's to stop him from just being killed? So he figures, you know, it might be just safer if I escape. And it is revealed that it is not safe for Evelyn to reveal who she is. It's revealed that the leader of the Scandians has taken this vow to basically kill any of King Duncan's household. Because apparently his son went to go fight in the war that Arak and his men went to fight in. So he's not too happy about that, obviously. So he swears to basically kill any of Duncan's household that he comes across. Meaning Evelyn will be killed if she reveals who she is. So basically her and Will need to get out of there before they get to Scandia. And, and they actually did try and escape, but it did not go too well. And just, I felt so bad for Will when they actually get to Scandia. Like, Evelyn, she's got it pretty good, you know, it's hard work, but she's working inside. Scandia is like freakishly cold. Like, I believe it's like based after Scandinavia, like really northern Europe. So you know, she's working inside, her work isn't quite as bad. Will, on the other hand, is a yard slave, meaning he's working outside, horrible conditions, and he gets on the bad side of the slaves in charge of the lower yard slaves. And because they are a bunch of jerks, they get Will addicted to this drug called Warmweed. And it's super addictive, and it just leeches everything that is Will out of Will. And it's it pained me. It actually really pained me to see, you know, happy-go-lucky Will, Mr. Cheerful, Mr. Clever, Mr. Questioning, be reduced to this, like, childlike state, where all he can think of is following the immediate instructions he was given so he can get his next fix. And Arak actually feels really bad when he sees what has become a Will. Because he respected Will as, like, you know, a warrior. He saw Will, you know, doing his thing with the arrows at the Burning Bridge, and he was impressed. He was impressed with Will's courage and bravery and self-sacrifice self and all that. And he was impressed with Evelyn, too, because even though she's clearly not a ranger, or even a ranger's apprentice, she still bravely, you know, stood by Will, even after Will fell, and still tried to defend him. And if Eric had his way, he wouldn't have let what happened to Will happen. 
that doesn't show the level of respect that he feels Will deserves, even as a slave. You know, I found I really started to like Arak in this book. He... He's an interesting character. He has a nice set of beliefs that I can respect. Not only as a reader, but as a person. And I thought it was really nice how he actually helped Will and Evelyn escape. Just, I'm picturing this big, bulky, Viking-like guy being such a softy. It's actually an interesting image. But yes, he helps Will and Evelyn escape. His plan was actually really brilliant. And he planned for like, pretty much every little thing, which proves he's not only a guy with a strong set of beliefs, but he's also clever. I was worried, extremely so, when Evelyn was taking Will to his little hunting lodge that is basically abandoned because it's winter and it's not going to be used until the coming spring, but she's there alone with Will. She has to try and get there, which was difficult because he sent them off like during a blizzard which was smart but risky because a blizzard the snow will cover their tracks fast enough so they couldn't be tracked but at the same time they could freeze to death they could get lost they could very easily die so that was a risky move but in short it was the best move that he could have made and you know, it was overall the best move because they did make it. Evelyn managed to get them there and throughout the whole winter she's slowly weaning Will off the warm weed and it's just, I felt so bad. In the grand scheme of things, her and Will didn't know each other well or very long, but just based on that experience they had on the bridge and then being kidnapped to Scandia, that kind of thing brings people close together and yeah they kind of have this special bond now. Then Will's kind of like the only friend she has within a lot of distance and seeing someone she considers her friend in the state he's in it made my heart go out to her that she kept doing what she had to do to look after Will. And I won't lie guys it I got Terry when Will finally overcame the addiction and was returned to himself. Just... My poor heart. <laughs> During all this, Halt is trying so hard to go after Will, but after all the events that happened in the last book, there's just so much that needs to be done and they need him there in, with the Rangers. So Halt, being the stubborn guy that he is, he was actually exiled from the kingdom for the span of like a year. So, meaning, he's now free to go look for Will. And he gets Horse to come with him, which was really nice, because, you know, they both lost Will. Everyone loves Will. So, they are going to go and get him, which is a big pain, because they actually have to go through a lot to get him. And they have their own interesting adventures along the way. They basically have to cross the sea and they land in what I believe is supposed to be this world's version of France. And uh, the knights there aren't the same as the ones Horace grew up, you know, idolizing. They are basically big bullies. He doesn't like it. And he's pretending to be a knight on Holt's orders to challenge any other knights who, you know, are trying to get a little money off of them. And just him pretending to be a knight is so cool. He pretends to be like the knight of the oak leaf and Halt draws like him a sigil on a shield and it's, it's adorable. Horse doesn't like it because he feels like he's lying. He feels false because he's not a knight yet. He's just an apprentice. Not that any of the knights finding him know that for sure. But he kicks butts until he comes across this one knight who actually holds some land. And uh, yeah, don't really like him. They're kind of forced to stay at his keep for a while, which Halt is not pleased about. I don't want to go too much into it because time. But just the adventures that both parties went through during all this were interesting. There wasn't a boring moment at all in this book. 
like, you know, the previous two books, there's always something happening, but there's not so much happening at once that you feel overwhelmed. You know, which I like. You know, perfect balance of length and action, if that makes sense at all. So in short, I'm really excited to keep reading this series. So far, it's definitely living up to the memories that I have of it from years ago. So yeah, that is it for this book review, and I hope to see you guys next time. Keep on reading, my fellow book addicts. Keep on reading.